Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gertube before here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Block MB-175T. The Block MB-170 and its derivatives were French reconnaissance bombers designed and built shortly before the Second World War. They were the best aircraft of this type available to the uh, Army de Air at the outbreak of the war, with speed, altitude, and maneuverability that allowed them to evade interception by German fighters. Though the, though the aircraft could have been in service by 1937, debate over what role to give the aircraft delayed deliveries until 1940. Too few in numbers to affect the Battle of France, they continued in service with the Vichy Fortress after the armistice. The MB-174 is notable as the aircraft flown by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, author of The Little Prince, during the campaign. His work, Pilot de Guerrera, published in 1942, is based off a 1940 reconnaissance mission in this type of aircraft. In 1936, the Ministry of Air initiated a program of modernization of French aviation, which included a request concerning a two- or three-seat multi-role aircraft that could be used as a light bomber or attack aircraft or for reconnaissance. A design team at the former block factory at uh, Colbrevere, um, led by Henri de Plant, proposed the MB-170, a twin-engine, low-winged, cantilever monoplane. The first prototype, the MB-170AB2-83, number 1, equipped as a two-seat attack bomber or a three-seat reconnaissance aircraft, made its main flight on February 15, 1938. It was powered by two 970 horsepower Gnome Run. 14N radi radial engines and was armed with a 20mm Hispano Suez cannon in the nose, two 7.5mm Mac 1934 machine guns in their wing with their machine gun f flexibly mounted in the rear cockpit with a ventral cupola housing either a rearward firing machine gun or a camera. The second prototype, MB-170B3, number two, was a three-seat bomber with the ventral cupola removed, a revised canopy and larger tail fins. After many modifications, it became the definitive MB-174 after the 50th example was delivered in May 1940. The MB-175 succeeded the MB-174 on the assembly lines in full flow. This bomber version had a redesigned bomb bay capable of carrying bombs of 120 kilograms or 220 to 440 pounds, where the MB-174 was limited to 50 kil kilogram bombs or 110 pound bombs. The MB-175's fuselage was lengthened and widened to accommodate the greater capacity, but only 25 were delivered before the armistice. They were eventually used in the same reconnaissance units as the MB-174s, and the MB-176 was a version with the Pratt & Windy um, 1830 radials, which proved to have poor performance in the MB-175. It was ordered to, into production to ease demand of the French engine manufacturers. The version we have in front of us here is the MB-175T. This right here is kind of like the uh, later versions of it, I guess. The upgraded version compared to that of the MB-174 and probably the better version of the aircraft. The version in particular in front of us also is designed to be a torpedo bomber. The T standing for torpedo. So, um, pretty interesting aircraft here. We don't have very many French aircraft at all, so it's nice to finally um, dive into another French aircraft. And uh, this one kind of being a pretty cool reconnaissance or torpedo bomber, whichever kind of role you want this to fulfill. Um, but the version we have in front of us here does have a torpedo mounted on the bottom, so it is definitely designed more for that torpedo type role. Uh, before we go and take a look at the aircraft, I do want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rushbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always in my video description. With that though, let's dive in here to take a look at the uh, Block MB. 175T. So uh, we have this here in a kind of white color scheme. This is kind of uh, unusual. We don't really have, I don't think, any World War II aircraft in a white color scheme. So this is definitely unique in that sort of sense. Uh, but yeah, we have the white color scheme here using the polished diorite, which kind of has a little bit of an off white. So it's not using quartz, which just I feel overpowers the build too much. And I think that this um, diorite here just kind of gives a nice, closer kind of, um, you know, Dirty white, I guess you can say. I don't know how, how to really explain it. But yeah, that's that. We have the nose up here. Um, obviously, kind of the um, 
I guess nose uh, windows there for what would be the uh, bombardier. Um, on the bottom here, you can see we have the torpedo mounted. So pretty simple stuff there. Just a nice torpedo mount on the bottom there. Um, we have the obviously the wings, the 20 millimeter cannons that are mounted on the wings there to the sides. And then have the uh, radio engines there on both sides. Nothing too fancy there. The cockpit, the rear machine gun, and you have the tail here, which is a very interesting tail. Um, definitely very unique for this aircraft and how the vertical stabilizers kind of angle up and the, I should say the horizontal stabilizers angled up and the vertical stabilizer is actually higher than the fuselage. So um, kind of weird for an aircraft of this type of um, design, but overall, I really do like it, honestly. And a uh, really cool aircraft. It's been a while since we've done some French ones, so definitely nice to come back and revisit the French um, lineup of World War II military vehicles. Anyways, with that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so for our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and starting off with layer uh, number 3. Layer 3 is just kind of a better base layer to start with, and we'll be going ahead and adding layers 1 and 2 on after we complete this layer here. A few things I want to mention here, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, is first off, uh, what I like to do here is I like to do half on half off. What this means is we're building the entire center line of the aircraft and then we'll be building the right side. It'll be up to you guys in between layers to copy the right side over to the left side. It'll make a little bit more sense as we progress through the build, but just keep in mind that um, there are a few little tiny differences here and there. And once we get to those, I will explain those a little bit more detail, but just note that Basically, if I tell you to do something on the right side and I don't say otherwise, you're pretty much going to copy it over to the left side. So pretty straightforward. This build's, for the most part, symmetrical. Um, in addition, this is going to be for the in-flight version also. Um, the landed version would require this aircraft to be slanted and would require a whole separate tutorial uh, if one was to come out. But uh, this is, again, going to only be for the in-flight model for the MB-175T. And with that, let's go and dive into it and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be placing down our center line. We're going to place down a polished direct top slab, a skeleton skull come off that top slab toward the front, a birchwood sign, that'll be on both sides of the top slab, and then an end rod coming back from that, and that's going to be there for the front. We're going to go and then skip a space back from the end rod. We're going to place down a um, iron trap door, so you can just place down a block here coming off that end rod, just know you'll delete it later. And then we're going to place down two iron trap doors on the top portion of the block, so just like that. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three, four uh, polished direct walls, or just sorry, regular direct walls, and then two iron trap doors after that. We're gonna go then go to this iron trap door here. We're gonna place down an iron trap door on the side of that. We're gonna go then skip a space here, place down two polished direct top slabs, and then we're gonna go and then place down our iron trap door here. Now at this point, you have a couple options on what you can do. Um, if you are on Java, or sorry, first we'll start with Bedrock or Pocket Edition, we'll place down a dark oak defense gate here, come off these two walls. Nothing too fancy, pretty straightforward. Uh, another option for you all on Java is to go ahead and use our debug stick. So using this command uh, right here, slash give space at p space minecraft colon debug stick, pressing enter will give you this glowing stick. Using this stick we can go ahead and do some cool modifications here to the build, or just the properties of minecraft. So we're going to have our two blocks here that are going to come off the sides of these walls. We're going to place down levers on the sides of those. And we're just going to take our debug stick, left click until we get to selected facing, and by crouching and right clicking we can go ahead and rotate the lever until it connects up to the wall right here. Same thing right here, like so. Then by left clicking the lever again, we can get selected, powered, false, and we can go ahead and activate that so it's powered at true and it's facing downwards like that. Then we can go ahead and delete these blocks right here as we will not need them any further and we can kind of go ahead and continue on with the build. So after we have that done, depending on what you do on both sides, we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, th three, four, five iron trap doors back. If you do have problems with your iron trap doors opening uh, due to levers on Java, you can go ahead and left click the trap door until you get selected, open, and we're going to go ahead and set, it should say open to true. We're going to go ahead and right click that so it says open to false. And that's one way you can fix the trap doors if they do decide to pop open. After that though, we want to go ahead and then place down a, another row of five of iron trap doors here to the side. We're going to go ahead and then place down uh, a polished blackstone up downstairs. here. So just like that. And we then want to place down a polished blackstone top slab. And after that, we want to go ahead and place down a dark oakwood trap door. Um... Or actually, my bad, it's actually going to be two polished blocks on top slab. So, one more polished blocks on top slab, a dark oak trap door, and then after that, a 
iron trap door here on the end. Then after we have that done, we want to go ahead and then grab our gray concrete. We're going to place down one, two, three gray concrete blocks. And then we're going to place down one, two polished blackstone top slabs and a dark liquid trap door on the end there. We then place down an iron trap door here to the side of this, followed by a dark liquid trap door here, a polished blackstone top slab, followed by a second one, and then polished blackstone upside down stair. We're going to place down one more gray concrete block going forward, polished blackstone upside down stair to both sides of that block. And we want to go ahead and place down there a black concrete block there in the center. This is going to be followed up with a polished inside upside down stair to both sides and then another stair going forward like that. And then in the space in between here, we're just going to place down an iron bar like so. And once we have that all done, that right there is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number three. Looking at it from above here, this is what it should look like from the top down view once you take the right side and copy it over to the left side. With that though, that's going to conclude layer three. Let's move down to layers one and two. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number one and two. For these layers, we're going to go and drop down to the bottom here. We're going to go and go to our um, direct walls. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four polished inside uh, blocks going down from those walls. We then want to place down two blocks on the other right going forward for those polished inside blocks. And then going to the back here, we're going to place down two polished inside blocks going back like so. So it should look like this so far. We're going to go then place down the inside wall on the end here. And then a block on the other right after that. Come out the black and the right, we're going to place down an item frame, a cobweb in the item frame, and then if you're on Java, we'll place down a stone button on the side of that block on the other right. If you're on Pocket Edition or Bedrock, you'll not be able to place down a button and item frame in the same block space. If that's the case, just go ahead and disregard the button and just place down the item frame instead. After that, we want to go and then take our Wither Skeleton Skulls, going down from either our fence gates or levers. We're going to place down a Wither Skeleton Skull like that on those two blocks. And then at this point here, we can go and then take Iron Trap Doors, place down one, one, two, and one right here and use our debug stick here we can go ahead and right click those trap doors set them open to true and we can actually close them there on the side to give the torpedo a little bit more girth now um if you do not have access to a debug stick on a different version you could use birchwood uh, trap doors instead those will also work or dark oakwood whichever one you prefer after that on the bottom of this uh second uh block another right we're gonna place down an iron trap door and then we're gonna go back one two three four five for a total of six Iron trap doors there on the bottom of that torpedo there. And with that all done, that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for the torpedo. Moving to the sides, we're going to go grab our polished inside slabs. We're going to place down a top slab on the bottom of the iron bar right here. And then one more top slab back from that. We then want to grab our item frames. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of this this uh, slab. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black bed like so. And we also want to take a birchwood sign and place a birchwood sign on the side there of that block like so. We're going to place down a row of dark oak trap doors after those two polished inside top slabs so just two going back like that and once you have that all done right there that's going to conclude everything we have there for layers one and two and you can see here we have the torpedo mounted and basically the bottoms of our engine is complete with that let's move on up to layer number four moving into our next layer we're going to be going ahead and moving into layer number four for layer four to get started with here we're going to place down a diorite upside down stair on top of this top slab like so with another brick top slab coming off of it going forward from the aircraft we then want to place down a piston right here. So for us Java players, we're going to go ahead and place down the piston here. If you're not on Java, uh, I would recommend going ahead instead of placing the piston to place down a polished blacks or polished uh, diorite up down stair like so. So I would recommend that as an alternative instead of the piston, again, if you're not on Java. After that block right there, we're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 polished diorite full blocks. Then on the back here, um, we again have two pistons for us Java players. If uh, you're not on Java, we'll go ahead and very simply place down a polished diorite upside down stair and then a polished diorite top slab to go ahead and form the back there. So again, that's an alternative for you. Anyways, after those two blocks, we're going to place down two polished diorite top slabs and two iron trap doors like that going back. That right there is going to make the center line. After that, going to the side here of this piston here in the front and the stair, we're going to place down two skeleton skulls like so. Followed by another upside down polished diorite stair. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine polished diorite blocks. Or my bad, sorry, it's going to be eight polished diorite blocks back. And then a polished diorite upside down stair. Followed by two skeleton skulls on the side of these two pistons or the stairs and slabs. Then after we have that done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down two diorite walls coming off the side of this block here. We're going to go and then place down one, two, and three. Direct full blocks going back from those blocks. And we then want to take our pistons. We're going to place down two pistons. If you're not on Java, these can just be slabs. 
And then we're going to place down a, another row two of pistons like so, and then one and two diorite slabs. We're going to place down a skeleton skull on the side of this block here, and then a birchwood sign coming off that upside down stair. After that's done, uh, our next row out to the side here is going to be one, two, three gray concrete blocks, followed by a second row of three, and then a third row. And then we're going to place down one block here in the center, polished diorite full block to both sides. And then we want to go and then place down a row of three of polished diorite full blocks going across. We're going to place down a piston right here, and again, one and two polished diorite blocks over. Then a uh, polished diorite slab. A polished diorite stair, and or my bad, actually, it's going to be a another slab and then a stair like that for that, like so. Um, after that, go ahead and build our engine toward the front here. We're going to place down a row of three of black concrete. Then we're going to go and grab our uh, stone brick walls. We're going to place down a stone brick wall, iron bar to both sides there, and then taking our blocks another right. We're going to place down a block another right, coming off the stone brick wall, and then a wither skeleton skull, which will be coming off the block like this going forward. After that's done, we want to go ahead and grab our iron trap doors. We're going to place down one and two iron trap doors over here, one and two. And then use our debug stick here. We'll go ahead and close these. Again, a good alternative if you're not on Java is to either use uh, dark oak wood trap doors or birch wood trap doors instead for the signing, whichever you prefer so that you can close the trap doors like that. Anyways, though, after that is done, we want to go and then grab our uh, polished right full blocks and we're going to place down a uh, row of one, two, three, four, five, six polished diorite full blocks back and a polished diorite top slab. Our next row here is going to be another polished diorite full block. So up here in the front, it's actually going to go back one, so it's coming off the second one there. And then we're going to go ahead and grab a diorite wall, we're going to place it down, come off this block. And then we're going to grab a skeleton skull, place it down, come off this, and then the birchwood sign on the side of that wall, like that. After that, going back from that polished diorite block, we're going to go ahead and place down an additional two more. So one, two. And then we're going to place down one, two, three. Top sides back, like so. After that, our next row here is just going to be a row of six of polished diorite top subs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three. Then grabbing our iron trap doors, we're going to place down one, two, three. And then one on the center, like that. And with that done, looking at from above here, this one you should have for the top down view with uh, layer, or with this layer complete. Um, at this point also for us Java players with the pistons right here, we can go ahead and right click the pistons, extend them to true, and to go ahead and kind of set them up like so. So we're going to do that just for the pistons and the wings for the time being. But anyways though, that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number uh, four. And with that, we'll keep going ahead and moving into our next layer. Layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five to get started with here, we're going to place down a black stained glass block on top of this narrow brick uh, slab, and then a narrow brick wall coming off that glass block, like so. We're going to go ahead and place down two black concrete blocks back from that glass block there. Then a row of diorite full blocks, which is going to be a total of 17 blocks down the center here. Then a upside down piston here. This can either be replaced with a upside down um, polished diorite stair, or top slab. Probably a stair would be the best there if you're not on Java. So we have our piston here, and then we're gonna place down our top slab after the piston, like that. After that's all done, uh, we can go ahead and then go to our center line here, and for us Java players to take our debug stick, we can go ahead and right click these pistons here on the bottom to go ahead and set them like so, like we did for the wings there, to kind of help with the shaping there of the aircraft. After that's done, go into the sides here now of the aircraft, we're gonna go ahead and place down an air brick wall off this glass block, and then a wither skeleton skull. We're gonna go ahead and then place down a white stained glass pane, then a direct wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten direct blocks back. One, two, three, four direct walls, and one and two white stained glass panes. After that's done, we want to go and then take our iron trap doors and place down one, two, one, two to the side there, and we're going to go and then place down two polished black stone slabs, then two pistons here, and two polished black stone slabs. If you're on a different version, a, a gray concrete block and then a polished blackstone stair could work here instead of the pistons. We're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab here and then a wither skeleton skull in the corners here at slight angles like so. Then after that a dark oak trap door with this going back. After that's done we want to go then place down a gray concrete block here then a black concrete block like that. We then want to place down a 
polished black stone stair to both sides of this gray concrete block. And then taking our polished anside stairs, we're going to go, and go two forward from these stairs like that. After that's all done, we're also going to place down a iron bar that will be coming off these blocks like so. One thing I would also like to mention is for us shallow players down here, these uh, fence gates won't connect to the iron trap, or these iron bars will not connect to the iron trap door there because of the debug stick, but we can um, use the power of our tools here to actually go ahead and extend these iron trap doors to the size we need to. So it might be a little bit different depending on what uh, you know version you're on, but you can see here that I just basically selected directions that they weren't facing to the sides there, and by right clicking them, it extends them for me and fills those engines in a little bit better. So just keep that in mind though also for um, that because we use the debug stick on those iron trap doors, they will not transfer over um, or they will not connect to the iron trap doors officially. Um, anyways though, after that is all done right there, uh, we wanna go and then take our iron trap doors. We're gonna place down a row of one, two, three, four. And with that, we're also gonna go ahead and wanna grab some daylight detectors. We're gonna place down a iron trap door that will be coming off this one here, then two daylight detectors and then one and two iron trap doors back. Now you can use your debug stick here to go ahead and force the trap doors closed. So by going ahead and selecting selected open true, we can right click these trap doors and close them like that. Or you can change the, the daylight detectors there to night mode or use birch with trap doors instead. One of those uh, options will work for whatever version you're on. We're gonna go then place down another daylight detector here. And after that, we're gonna go, and go back from that with two polished um, direct slabs and then one and two daylight detectors, like so. Actually, sorry, just one daylight detector. And then a iron trap door, like so. And we'll use our debug stick here again to close it. Now after that, we wanna go and then grab our polished diorite. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four. And then a daylight detector here on the back. Uh, once we have that done, uh, we also wanna go ahead and grab an iron trap door. And we're just gonna place down an iron trap door here on the bottom of this daylight detector. And we're gonna go and right click that. So the debug stick We'll force that closed. Then after we have uh, that done, we're gonna place down a polished direct slab here. And then going back from that, we're gonna place down two pistons. So one, two, and then an air polished direct slab, and then another data detector here on the back, like that. Once uh, that's done, uh, we wanna go ahead and then place down a uh, polished direct slab like so. And then we're gonna place down a, or actually, sorry, my bad, it's actually gonna be a uh, full block right here next to that piston, like so. And then we're gonna place down two pistons back. So one and two. And then after that, <clears throat> we're gonna go and place down a top slab, or rather actually an air full block. So full block to the side here. And then we're gonna place down two more, back like so. And then we're also gonna place down a polished direct slab here. And then a top slab, like that. After that's done, uh, we wanna go and then place down <clears throat> a row of three of top subs, so one, two, three. And then we're gonna place down a iron trap door on the end. We're gonna go then place down an iron trap door here on the front, two top subs, like so, of diorite, and then an iron trap door, and then two more iron trap doors, like so. Then to get our debug stick here, we can go ahead and right click those pistons, like that. And we can also go ahead and place down a chain that will be coming off of this slab right here and that'll be on both sides of the aircraft. In addition, these um, pistons here can also be selected and changed to that state like so. And also on the left side here, we do have a bit of a difference on the aircraft. Now this right here is gonna be the addition of coming off this direct full block to end rods like that going forward. These um, end rods here will then drop. So we're gonna place down a block underneath this end rod here. For us Java players, we're gonna place down a lever. And then using our lever here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, change the selection of it or change the rotation of it. So it's going to be selected facing. We're going to right click this until it faces this direction here back to the front and then we're going to place down a um, end rod on the back of it like so. So it's going to look something kind of like this and we're actually going to go and scoot this back one more. So the end rod's actually going to be positioned here and then we're going to have the lever and we're going to go and rotate it like so. And it'll be over here on the left side, in the left side only, and that's basically what it'll look like right there. So pretty simple stuff, and uh, just go ahead and apply that to the left side once you get both sides copied over. Anyways though, that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer 5, and with that, let's move on to layer number 6.
Moving into our next layer, we have layer 6. For layer 6 to get started with, you're going to place down an arabic slab on top of this uh, black stained glass block. Then we're going to place down two black stained glass blocks back from that slab. We're going to then place down a polished diorite full block, two black stained glass blocks, three polished diorite blocks, two black stained glass full blocks, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten polished diorite full blocks back, then a uh, diorite wall, and then a skeleton skull there on the end. After that's done, we can go and then go to this piston here on the back, right click it, and it should turn into that piston mode like so. Going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a row of one and two black stained glass panes here, then a uh, diorite stair like so, diorite corner stair, diorite slab, one, two, three, diorite stairs, diorite corner stair, and then a air stair like so, coming off of it, and then an air stair like that, so this turns into a corner stair as well, and then you have a normal stair, and then one, two, three, four. Diorite walls, one, two, three, four white stained glass panes. Going back like so. And then lastly, a birchwood sign on the side there of that diorite wall on the very end of the tail there. After that's all done, going to our engines here, we're to place down two iron trap doors on top of these two blocks there. And then going out to our outer wings, we're gonna go and place down um, two iron trap doors right here. After that, we wanna go and then grab some diorite slabs. We're gonna place down a iron trap door here, and then also two daylight detectors, and then their iron trap door. And use our debug steer, we'll right click those trap doors to go ahead and set them flat. We're going to place down a daylight detector here. And then after that, we'll close the trap door on there on the bottom. We're going to go and then place down a polished diorite slab here. Then two slabs. And then one slab, like so. On the back side here, we're just going to place down two daylight detectors, like so, along the side. And in these corner spaces, we're going to place on a block that drops down on both sides here, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull in those corner spaces like so. So about 45 degree angles there. And after that, on the bottom here, we're just going to place down an iron trapdoor on the bottom of the piston, and on this daily detector as well, we'll go ahead and edit our blocks here, because those pistons will probably reset, and that iron trapdoor will pop open since it's on a daily detector. So let's go ahead and make sure it's closed. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude everything we have there for layer 6. As you can see, your wings are pretty much done for the aircraft. And, um... All that fun stuff. So with that, that is going to conclude layer number six. And with that, we'll be moving on to layer number seven. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven, to go ahead and get started with here, to place down two birchwood buttons on top of these two blocks here, then an iron trap door, a narrow brick stair, two black stained glass blocks going back from the narrow brick stair, a end rod, two black stained glass blocks, and two polished black stone slabs, a wither skeleton skull, and then a chain there on the very end, like so. After we have that done, we're going to go then skip two spaces, just place down an iron trap door, two daylight detectors like so, and then their iron trap door on the back here. After that's done, going back up to the front, we're going to go ahead and go out to the sides with a skeleton skull, come off the snare brick stair, a black stained glass pane, then a end rod, a black stained glass pane, end rod, then two black stained glass panes going back like so. At this point, uh, if you're on Java, we'll take our debug sticks here, and we'll go ahead and actually modify the properties here by going ahead and extending the glass panes, basically to the sides here. And what this will do here is it will fill in the glass on the canopy a little bit better, making it look a little bit more well connected. And it'll just be doing the same thing there for both sides. If you have the debug stick, obviously, if you don't have the if you don't have the debug stick and um, you're not on Java, you will not be able to do this feature um, and all that. So you'll just have to do the glass panes, which is a bit unfortunate, but just kind of the way it is. But uh, yeah, that right there is pretty much that. You can also get rid of the um, end rods if you don't if you want as well and instead of the end rods place down black stained glass paint instead if you want a little bit more of a well-connected cockpit uh, But again kind of up to you guys, but this right here is the best we can do um, especially on Java Then we're gonna place down uh, just a polish or just a dark liquid sign on the side here of this um, Slab here. So just like that after that going to our tail We're gonna place down one and two direct slabs and then a daylight detector like so we then want to place down another three Direct slabs to the side here, as well as a skeleton skull at a slight angle like this on top of this um, glass pane there. We're gonna go then go up, place down two uh, polished direct top slabs, and then we're gonna go then place down two iron trap doors like so. After that, we're gonna go then skip a space, place down a full block of direct, and we then wanna place down a upside down stair and a top slab, and that going forward for that for the start there of our vertical stabilizers. 
after that's all done that's pretty much it for this layer here one thing i do want to go ahead and expand upon is i did forget in the previous layer to cover how to go ahead and make this banner so we're going to go ahead and move into making that banner now i'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials and uh we'll make that banner for the side of the aircraft all right guys so moving into making this banner here on the side for the front or the french uh randall pretty simple stuff where i need two white banners two red dye two blue dye and four white dye we're going to start off by going into our loomer to place our white banner and for both these banners we're going to place down a border of red so it's going to go around the entire perimeter and that'll be done for both banners at this point uh, both banners are going to go back into the loom and we're going to go ahead and pick for the first banner we're going to do the bottom uh, left hand square like so and we then want to go ahead and then do the top right hand square or sorry top uh top left hand so it'll be something that looks like this here so that, that banner and we're actually going to need two more red dye. So, my bad on that one. I kind of underestimated how many which we need here. Uh, but that's it for this banner for right now. We're going to place our other banner into the loom in our red dye. We're going to go and select the uh, bottom right-hand corner this time. And then the top uh, right-hand corner for this other banner. At this point, this banner is going to be placed back into the loom in our, with our blue dye. So, the line, the side opposite from our red squares, we're going to place down a blue line like this. So, like so. And then we're going to do the same thing for this banner. So like that blue line after that we're going to place down our banners back into our loom and our white dye for this banner here the side that our blue line is we're going to go and do the um, white on those corners so for this banner it will be the right in the bottom corner and it will be white in the top right hand corner so you get a banner that looks like this same thing will be done for this one right here so the blues on the left side so bottom left corner and top left corner and you'll get these two banners like so place these banners it's really simple you're just gonna be going ahead and go into the side of these walls here you're gonna place down the two banners like that with the blue facing toward each other so pretty simple and straightforward stuff for that anyways though that right there will conclude what we have for uh layer number or with layer seven on the way and with that we're probably gonna be moving into our last final layers so with that let's move on to our last final layers of the aircraft all right guys moving into our final layers we have layers eight through ten for these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and start off by placing down two dark oak wood trap doors on top of these first two black stained glass blocks. On top of this um, end rod right here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence post and then a skeleton skull going up from the fence post. After that fence post, we're going to place down three dark oak wood trap doors back. At this point in time, we're going to go and then go to our vertical stabilizers. We're going to place down one, two, three polished diamond blocks and then a white stained glass pane come out the front there. We then want to place down a polished diamond block going up right here. And then a diary wall to both sides, and then an air slab on top of this diary block, like so. At this point in time, we're going to go and grab barrier blocks, or structure blocks, um, depending on what version you're on. Uh, we're going to go and place down a barrier block going back from this skeleton skull here. Then we're going to go out to the sides, place down two. Out to the side again, one. Out to the side with two. Out to the side, one. Out to the side, two. And then out to the side, one. And back. We're going to take our stone buttons and just place it down on the sides here of those blocks like so and that right there will kind of do your cabling there for the aircraft and then also uh for the horizontal stabilizers we're going to place down two iron trap doors here and two polished direct slabs like that to connect our horizontal stabilizers up to our vertical ones at this point in time we're also going to go and grab our bloom and our banners again and we're going to be going ahead and making these banners here for the side of the aircraft so making these banners here are super simple uh we're just going to need our loom and we're going to place our white banner in our loom with our blue dye. The blue dye is going to be the line on the left side here. And then we're going to place that banner back in the loom with red dye. And red dye is going to be on the right side with that blue and create this uh, kind of um, three-striped banner. Now, uh, this right here, very simply, is just going to be placed on the side of this um, diet wall here. And this diet block like that for the tail or the rear end or the aft section of this vertical stabilizer. We're also going to place down two virtual buttons on those two blocks right there. And that's it for those banners. And the last thing for us to really cover is going to be the propellers. Propellers here are pretty simple and kind of a tr standard design I use across my builds. But basically to place these, real simple, we're going to go, and go to this engine here. We're going to go up, polish black stone wall, up at an angle again. And then we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like so. Going to this side, we're going to place down one, two, three, four blocks. We're going to delete this first block, wither skeleton skull. Delete the second block, wither skeleton skull. And same thing here, wither skeleton skull. And then we can delete all those blocks all together. Then going down from this um, block, we're going to place down a block right here, wither skeleton skull, block underneath that wither skeleton skull, and then coming off of it like so, and then an air block coming right here, 
Wither Skeleton Skull will come off the side of that. And basically the same thing will be applied over to the air side, and once you have that done, you'll have both props complete, and with that you'll have the uh, block uh, MB-175T um, torpedo bomber all completed. Anyways, hope you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do not use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This means thank you for my sign up build to to my channel or this video if this does bring in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free user for a project you guys are um, working on. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett204, and I'll see you guys next time.